Good evening. Hopefully everybody is doing okay. This is kind of a last minute throw together today. I had a phone call from somebody I haven't heard from in a little while, and they actually supplied me with almost a van full of photos, posters, circus stuff. I have some postcards. I'm pretty full in-house right now. I haven't even sorted them yet. I hadn't planned on going anywhere today. So this is just what happened. Um, hopefully everybody can hear me okay. Again, I just kind of threw this together at the last second. It wasn't really what I wanted to do, but I was out uh, sourcing, literally. Well, not really sourcing, I should say, but going to one specific uh, place. Um, we'll show you some of the stuff I got here. Photos are one of the biggest ones that I got. I got four or 5,000 8x10, all movie-related. Uh, most of them are like... Um, studio stills that would have been uh, literally shown inside mounted on a wall somewhere uh, circus posters from the 50s postcards I've got most most of them are real photo real picture postcards I have those over here I probably won't show those today I will probably throw together a separate video um, just for that um, I know this went up really late so I probably won't get a lot of people on to the last minute uh, so hopefully everybody is doing well. I see Duncan's in the house. Looks like Duncan's been busy. I've got Bob right below and Charlie Peck so far. Let me start with, I guess, maybe some of the big things. And we'll talk about some things going on with eBay as well. Now, I picked up, I don't know, maybe 400 circus-related items. And I've had some of these before. These are local ones, too. Now, this is pretty big, so I can't really show you the whole thing, but... It's at the fairground. It's a big circus. Hoxie Brothers is well known. It's one that's been around for a very long time. Not in super condition, but I've got two or three damaged ones. I'm going to put a couple together and make one good solid one. Now, these aren't as graphic as some of the ones I would like, but again, I didn't pay hardly anything for them, so I really can't complain. Let's see which one do I got here. Clyde Beatty Brothers. Um, this is a very well known one, also. Again, very large. Columbus, Ohio. Now, I'm not sure where the Northland Shopping Center is. I've been to Columbus many times. This is typically uh, the stuff that a lot of people don't mess with because it doesn't have the graphics on it. But a historian or a collector from Columbus, I can almost guarantee you, will pay me 50 bucks plus for any one of these sorts from Columbus. Circus collectors want them. They still frame up very nicely because these are original cardboard. They're not like junk or anything like that. These were expensive when they were made. Hang on, let me... Get a few more of these larger size ones out of here first. Some of them are better than others. Lewis Brothers, um, Fashion Big Top, uh, Piketon. I'm not even sure where Piketon's at. I know it's in Ohio somewhere, but this is the sort of thing that I nab up. Now, I don't have much in everything. If you sit there and try to equate out, you know, individual items, I got less than a penny into anything. Um, I got to count in 4,000 or better stills and, and uh, 8x10s postcards. I, mean, I probably got 8,000 items maybe today. Filled up the van, back seat, uh, all behind there. My, the front seat next to me, the floor, the side. Literally the van was pretty heavy. My springs, you could tell, because this is heavy stuff, a lot of this stuff here. Um, again, I got to figure out a place to put it. I just literally walked in. So when the show's done today, I'll be up for a while trying to put this all away somewhere. Uh, cells and grays. Now, I grabbed, I didn't even grab it all, honestly. I grabbed the ones that I thought I could get money for immediately. Um, let's make sure everybody can hear. Looks like I don't hear any complaints about sound. We'll get into some things here in just a few minutes. Um, Mount Gilead, I'm not even sure where that's at, honestly. It doesn't matter where they're at. It's just the age. These date to around 1955 through 62, I think, is the the newest one of, of anything in here. Lewis Brothers again, another Lewis uh, one. Again, these do extremely well. They're not um, as nice, obviously, as the ones I have with like clowns. And I do have some really big ones that fold out that are on paper with clowns. I've got a couple in here that are like sideshow ones. One of them's actually, and I can't show it because it's got green and it's huge. One of them has a sideshow performer. It looks like it's painted canvas. My dog's down here. You have to excuse me today. Uh, let me put that down. Just show you a few more paper ones. Um, now these are more along the lines of some of the other ones I nabbed up. These will frame up. I can get the tape off if I really want. I may even repair a few of these. 
for those in Patreon, you've seen some of the repairs. It works out excellent. I usually um, can make it so the repair is almost invisible. I, I could replace this section here and you probably would never even notice. I've got some damaged ones. I grabbed a bunch that were damaged. You just threw them in and I'm going to use pieces from them on some of the ones that I think will do better. Now, all these aren't going to go very, very high. Um, these sorts here will probably be like maybe 25 bucks if I'm lucky, but I got like 60 or 70 of these sorts, all different various types as well. Harry's Magic Circus. Some of these you can look up and they're fairly well-known people too. Again, as I said, I've got some huge ones. I mean, a really big one. Um, Fourth of July. So this one has a tie-in. Um, Carson and Barnes, five rings. So the more rings, usually the more expensive I have found. I don't know if that's always the case, but that's what I usually handle with those. Um, I may do a, a shout-out because I got a 1931 White City poster today that's just... It's a very interesting poster. It's a real big, large, I think it's um, maybe 30 by 60. I, I don't remember the exact size, but um, that came with these two. And it's from White Town, which is, um, or White City, I'm sorry. White City is um, in Chicago. So anyway, you can just see a good idea on what I got with these. But I've got a lot, and I do mean a lot. Here's some other different varieties. Some of them have some staining on them, but I'm not really worried about that. Some of them have never even been used. Yeah, that one's not going to show up very well. The yellow's bloated out. So, anyway, there's a bunch of this stuff here. I've got a whole mess of magician posters. Cardboard ones. I don't want to turn them because I think it'll flash out with the camera. But you can kind of see them there. Again, there's a couple thousand pieces of circus paper uh, just like that. Again, I don't mind if it takes a long time to sell. When I get stuff like this... I'll sell the big money, the stuff that gets uh, the money in quick, right off the bat. I'll have all of my money back pretty much immediately uh, as soon as I start to list it. That's usually my ploy for everything like this. I'll pull out the high dollar stuff. I get my money back, a profit, and then who cares what happens with the rest. I'll probably be able to sell two or three pieces and pay for my whole van, the whole van load of stuff that I got. And that's typical. Um... I've got hundreds into it, of course, but I, I've got just a massive, massive, massive quantity. Um, I did get some buttons in today. I don't know if we'll go into buttons today or not, but I did get some buttons in today. Um, several pounds as well, too. Um, now, on these sorts, when I buy photos like this, I'm not so worried on who's technically in them when they're mass quantities. Again, I've got less than a penny a piece. I could mix these um, up like from certain eras or uh, from certain um, movies from a certain year, so to speak. And then I can sell them as a lot, like all from 1970, like 50 of this, 50 of that. Some of them won't even be marked. Other ones will. What's this one here? The Egyptian uh, Cinemascope. So you can kind of date it. 20th Century Fox. These are all original. They all have all the original promotional marks in the whole works you'd expect. Um, Scream Free. I have no idea what that one is. Um, now, if you want to date some of these, it's very easy if it's an NSS, National Screen Service, and these all are. When you see the numbers on posters, lobby cards, stills, or anything, that 71 is the date. And then you've got the, the what would that, forward slash, and then a 205. That 205 is the 205th movie that was licensed and registered with the National Screen Service for 1971. So it, you can pretty much track down any movie, even if it didn't have a name, if it has an NSS number, uh, a date code number like that. You could just fi easily figure it out from there. Um, Mondo Bellardo, no idea what that one is. We'll look through a bunch of these because there's some interesting ones in here. Um, again, people, who's in them is usually the, the bigger uh, aspect of it. Like, again, here's another National Screen Service, 1962. It is movie number 159. So if you went and looked at records of what movie came out when, you could count right down the row and you know exactly what this movie is. That's with posters, stills, lobbies, window cards, insert cards, half sheets, full sheets, six sheets, three sheets, double sheets, whatever. All of the advertising paraphernalia that would come with any movie release is all marked that way from a certain date on. Um, many of the ones that may not necessarily be marked with an NSS number will still have a date code basically the same way. 
show all the postcards now. I've got hundreds of postcards. I am going to be going through them, uh, Duncan. There. Let me pop up to the front there and see who's else is in house. Eric, good evening. Charles, how you doing, Charles? Everyday people, good evening, good evening. Marty, Jiminy, Jiminy Flip it. Welcome, welcome back as well, Marty. Hope you're doing well. Hope your channel is going well also. Black Crystal Dice, good evening. And I've got Annie in the house. For those in Patreon, I just posted, I think it's like 30 minutes or something. There's a video. Um, another Patreon had posted some images, and I'm going through in that video, and we're breaking down how to search, price, everything. So uh, I go into a lot of detail in there. I think I even called you out, Annie, on a question on something on a style in one of the photos. Um, if you get a chance, check it out. Uh, Stephen A. Banks Sr., how are you doing? Cash money, yes. Uh, did I miss somebody asking a question here? Uh, I've got records. Wait, best way to ship records. Got thousands. Uh, Eric S., just go to my channel. Um, go to, to the, my video list and go to the playlist on... Um, well, you don't even have to go to a playlist. Just type in Ultimate Media um, and that's all you need to do. And it will show you a, uh, a video that's got every type of media you could imagine how to ship every record 78s 45s lps sheet music uh, i ship these exact same way i ship sheet music so if you want to know how to ship uh, uh photos just watch that video it shows everything in there it's got dimensions printed on the screen of all of the cardboard i use where i tape everything um there shouldn't be any confusion if you watch that video on how to pack any media item i have cylinder records in there i think i have cassettes um, I know there's sheet music and stuff too, as I said. So that would be my best guess. It'd be a lot easier just to watch the video. It's like 10 minutes long, I think. Um, again, let me pop over to the other screen so I'm not leaning to the side to see who's on. Uh, and let me pop back down here. Uh, hang on just a second here. I'm just popping back up so we can see everybody. I'm on a different laptop now. Uh, full-size records. You're probably talking about LPs. Again, that is in there. Janet, how are you doing as well? Good afternoon. It's early evening here, I guess, on this end. Record Crate, good uh, welcome as well. I'm scared of clowns. Don't show those. I think you've said that before, Duncan. Honestly, that, that's, that rings a bell. The weirder, the bizarre the, the clown is, the, the more they go for. I sell a lot of Victorian items, uh, especially like trade cards from Clark's Mile End, uh, Thread and things like that, O&T Clark. Uh, they did a whole series on clowns. and Any of the Victorian clowns almost look demented and evil. I, I, it's kind of where I would imagine the killer clowns from outer space got the idea for many of the clowns. There's one in there that actually looks almost identical to one I have on a card. I saved the card just because of that. I've done a lot of stuff uh, for killer clowns from outer space, so I do like some of those bizarre, um, campy uh, movies. I appreciate the, the glitz, the camp part of it, I guess. A lot of people don't like that sort of thing, but I do. Uh, anyway, I grew up with friends. We did 8mm, 16mm movies when I was a kid. We shot one called uh, Nature Trail from Hell in 3D. I did all the, the intros. I did like three-dimensional letter. Long story short, I, I, I love that sort of thing. Um, Charlie Peck, good evening. There's a clown right there for you, Duncan. Yeah, and he's saying right there, I have that video. Literally, it'll show you everything. The, in the video, I show a specific size of box. That box is now available from eBay to ship almost anything you got if you've got a store subscription. So literally, I've got like 400 of those. I think they're 12-inch boxes. I ordered two stores worth in the same month, all of those boxes. Um, and then I haven't had to source much of the larger boxes. Uh, hint on boxes. If you've got friends local, go in with them. Go go talk to a local box manufacturer. I can almost guarantee you'll be able to cut the cost down in half on what you're paying right now, even buying in semi-bulk. We will buy a pallet, and then it'll split it between three of us. And usually it's dirt, dirt cheap. Um, I've got a way to pick it up, so they don't deliver it, so I save on delivery charges, too. They'll uh, pallet it up in onto a truck bed for us. And then from there, it's just strapping it down, dropping it off, and then we split it up. And by the end of the day, all that's left is a pallet. Just FYI. 
No clowns. I guess Annie doesn't like clowns either. Harry S. I used to buy old posters from a vendor on eBay. Been for three fifty to four each. Such a great deal. Yeah, there are vendors, even uh, sellers online still today that sell some bulk. But most of the bulk purchases, because this is a question I get all the time. Most of the bulk purchases that I see, somebody will say, hey, would you check this out for me? What do you think about this listing? Nine out of 10 times, probably more than that, probably 9.7 times out of 10, the seller that has those blots together had those items up already. So he already knows that they're not worth a bunch of money. Um, you want to know, just go check their sold listings. Most people... Not me, of course, but most people do have their listings where you can see what they sold. And just look. You'll see. Look at the, the, the photos on their listing. And if you look through a bunch of their listings, I can almost guarantee you most 99, almost 99% will have sold or listed those items. They didn't sell, so then they bulked them together at the end of the day. Most people I see have like a cycle. They'll list it once for you know a seven-day auction, another seven-day auction. They'll mark it down or something. And a lot of people just blow it out after the third run thing and it's not going to sell. Um, and that's what I used to do way, way, way back 15 years ago. We, if it didn't sell, I figured, oh, it's not going to sell. That's when you had to only run auctions. There wasn't an option to just let it run. So um, anybody running that, I can always tell they're older, older eBayers. They've been on for a while is the point. Not old in age, but old as in being on because most people wouldn't do that these days. Bin's always the way to go. I don't care what anybody else says. I've ran every single type of test and comparison, broke it all down in spreadsheets. You can look at Terapeak any day you want if you've got a level that has Terapeak. And you can literally compare which how many sold versus uh, auction versus bin. And it's always bin. It always sells for a higher amount and for more of them. You know, so it's always the bin. Let's let's look at a few more and we'll pop down to some more uh, questions here. Up from the beach. Again, I don't know what half of these are. I've never even heard some of these, but those are the ones that usually do better because they're they're odd, bizarre, strange movies and things like that. Nature Girl and the Slaver. That doesn't sound too good at all. It's in the Middle East somewhere. No idea. This came out in 59. Now, some of these date back to the 20s. I've got a stack that's probably from like 1920, 22 era in here. All originals, too. Those are the ones that I really hope will do well. That's the same title. I don't know if there's any sci-fi in here. I didn't even look. I know there's a lot of good westerns with people I know the names of. Um, Kent Taylor, I don't know who that is though. Uh, Jody McRae, this is The Broken Land, obviously a western one. Let's see if I can find something really neat or interesting in here. Summer Holiday with Cliff Richard. People should know who Cliff Richard is. Um, maybe not, but I know who Cliff Richard is. You guys should know. Somebody out there should know. Uh, here's 1957, The Restless Breed, Scott Brady, and Bancroft. Now, I know Anne Bancroft movies very well. That's pretty wild. Uh, this one's somebody you should know. I don't know if anybody will be able to holler it out. 40 Pounds of Trouble. Now, this gentleman here, somebody out there should easily know. So if you know who that is, pop a comment down in there. I know who it is. Everybody else should. He's been in a lot of movies. Um, what's the one that I always think about? The Magnificent... No, not, is that it? The Magnificent... Uh, the Great Race. That's what it's called, The Great Race. Um, Red Desert, Don Berry, Tom Neal, Jack Holt, Margie Dean, uh, the rest of them I don't have a clue on. Interesting ones. This one dates to 1949, so we're getting a little farther back in some of these. What else we got in here? Cuban Fireball, Republic Pictures. I know that one's early already. Uh, here's an oddball one. This one would probably be censored by the imagery these days, I guess, maybe. Or maybe they would have been censored back then. The Saga of Hemp Brown, Rory Colhoun. Colhoun? Yeah, I don't know who most of these people are. Let's, I was trying to find one if somebody, somebody would know in here. Uh, that woman, again, these are some low-budget ones. Those usually do extremely well, too. Uh, Dragoon Wells Massacre. This one I've heard of, actually. It's from 57. Yeah, I know. Somebody might get bored with seeing a whole bunch of images here, so we're not going to go through a ton of them. We'll probably hit some more comments in a minute here. Let me just see if I can't find the Bobo. I don't know. That one sounds familiar. Anybody know what the Bobo is? Movie. It's from... Uh, it doesn't. Yeah. No, it doesn't have a day. Bo 33. It must be a reshoot. Oh, Alma de Bronce. No idea. Pull out something more. The Giant Gila Monster. Now, that one I know. That one will do well on its own. 
The Giant Gila Monster is one of those weird sci-fi horror movies, um, a slasher type of the day. When did this one come out? 59, 255th movie in 1959. Rio Concords. Music related ones I do extremely well on too. Lone Star Moonlight, The Hoosier Hot Shots. Uh, and this is from a movie from 1946. Who's Hoosier Hot Shots? I've had a few records by them. They do okay. Stage to Thunder Rock. Thunder Rock's been used in like I don't know how many Western movies. Uh, uh, Malaya TV release. Now this is an oddball one. TV from the 50s or 60s. Uh, let's see here. Again, I'm trying to find something good. Up from the beach. It's a military. Trapped in Tangier. That one sounds familiar. Sea Wife. That sounds familiar. The Mountain. This is an interesting one. I've seen this movie, I want to say, years back. Yeah, I'll, let me just flip through a, down farther in here and see if we can't find someone. Here we go. Here's something pretty cool. Jane found in Anthony Perkins. Uh, Psycho fame Perkins. When did this come out? 1960. He's pretty young. It's got a little rip. Sometimes that doesn't matter either, believe it or not. I don't usually worry about rips and things. Here's a John Wayne Westward Trail. Now, I don't watch much vintage westerns personally. Nothing wrong with them. I watch them with my father, but John Wayne always goes. This is a John Wayne still here. Oh, here's a Disney, the Shaggy Dog. I think everybody remembers that. If not, they'll probably remember the new version of it when they redid it. That should sell well. A Touch of Larceny. Vera Miles. James Mason. There's somebody famous. 20,000 Leagues. James Mason. I think that is who the pilot of the uh, Nautilus was, if I'm not mistaken. Parent Trap. Another Disney one. Haley Mills. And that is uh, Brian Keith, I do believe. Does it say on there? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. No, that's not Haley Mills. I'm sorry. That, But that's probably Brian Keith then in the water. I didn't look at it close enough. Let's see what else we got here. Some strange, I guess this is like an Italian movie here. Crack in the Mirror. I don't know what that is. The Pharaoh's Woman. That's an oddball one. They had a little bit of a budget. Now, sometimes they'll have these on the back. These are like a uh, title line you would add to like a magazine or a book. So you would take a half tone of this if you were going to reprint it. A magazine, a newspaper would get this. They'd get a press kit. Sometimes there's a dozen photos. Sometimes there's 20, 24 photos. There's many different sizes of press kits depending on what you ordered. If you ran a movie theater, you'd get a catalog from most all the companies if you bought or I shouldn't say bought, if you, you won the bid for a movie. To get a movie in a theater back when I worked at movie theaters in the, in the 80s, my boss was the exhibitioner for the town. He would go to uh, a meeting with somebody or even a, a private screening. I went to, and I, I might have told this story once before, but I went to see Spaceballs bef like nine months before. It was up. Maybe it wasn't quite nine months, but it wasn't finished yet. There was no title. The colors were weird. There were some scenes that aren't in the final movie that we saw. And a bunch of people would go there. It, would, it was usually ran at like two o'clock in the morning. And um, there, he'd invite a couple of the employees, and I almost always got to go because I helped him with the projections and stuff. And we'd, we'd bid on it at the end of it. So he'd make an offer on what he would uh, pay percentage-wise and then an upfront cost. And the person who usually banked the most money got the first release of whatever movie it was. Now, I didn't work for a big theater, so there were usually lower-budget movies or they were second-run leases on them. Um, but he usually got to go to the main uh, preview of it. Again, they were only for exhibitioners back in the preview. So I used to get to see sneak peek on movies that I hadn't even heard of. I'd just go because we'd hang out and drink a few beers and have some fun. And nobody, you know, policed us. You could just pretty much hang out and do whatever. There was no regular people in the theater when that happened. And it used to be at the biggest theater in town they would do that in, which was Showcase here. The theater's not even there anymore. It's been torn down. So is the one that I worked at. There aren't many left anymore. Let me get to some better titles. I know I saw some really good titles in here. Cast a Giant Shadow. That's fairly fairly well known. In fact, there's a couple of those in here. Now, I get photos. Uh, this one has words censored into it. This one's been censored from 1957 with the censor code. Now, this one's pretty interesting. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see that, but popped into the actual um, photo. They've censored. They've, they've, it's 
and pass through the sensors, which is really weird. That's something you usually don't see. Now, it's got Gina Lola Brigida in it, too, or Brigida in it. The sensor-wise is probably from a magazine saying that it's okay to be published in the magazine, not necessarily from National Screen Service. Uh, now, some of these are lined with paper with, like, a canvas on the back. I'm going to have to look up many of these. Warlord Riding Into Chinese Village. China Sky is the name of this one. The Sand Pebbles. Now, this one I know. This has got Steve McQueen in it. It's a good movie. Um, look it up if you don't know what Sand Pebbles is, but um, it's a military-style movie. Uh, any good Devils of Darkness? Uh, let's see here. Carol Gray. There's an interesting one. Gee, I got so many. I could sit here like for a couple straight days and just do uh, these sorts of things. Uh, but anyway, let's let's go on to some questions, some comments. We'll talk some more about movie stuff throughout. I would imagine I'll throw some more in here. Let's pop down and see who else is in house. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna, as I said, show the. Po I take too long to even go through the postcards. Are you collector? How are you doing? I this I've gotten a lot of hauls. I just haven't spent the time to to shoot any video. I hate to say it. My life with the eye, I'm very limited now on certain things. Um, I'm going to have to deal with another change on this eye here because of... any. I'm not. A, it's a long story. I don't really want to go into my medical issues right now. But I, I've, it's turned up some other things that I've had to give up sugar. I'm on week three with no sugar at all. And I actually feel better. Um, and I'm not tired at all. I can only sleep five hours now. And I'm like literally wide awake before the alarm goes off um, from cutting out sugar. I was really surprised. I haven't eaten anything with actual sugar in it other than if it's naturally occurring fruits. So anyway, and I, I don't feel weird or anything. I thought for sure it was going to end my my ability to eat anything because I can't eat dairy from something from a couple of years ago from a, a spider bite. I have a, a pancreas issue right now from a spider bite from way back when. Didn't think I thought I was done with that for for quite a quite a long time, and it's apparently major issues still going on with that with me. So anyway, I've have had a lot of appointments. Let's just say that um, uh, everyday people. Hello, hello, Amazon seller ninety nine. Welcome back into which are my favorite picks. If you're talking about like these, I am a big. Uh, I like the fantasy movies, the vintage fantasy movies. If there's any from, say, um, The Seventh Voyage of Sinbad, Ray Harryhausen, any of those type of things, I'd probably keep. Um, Forbidden Planet, I will keep anything from Forbidden Planet any day of the week. I don't care. I'll buy it. I, I would buy it. There's one thing that I didn't know until I was an adult and, and loved this guy's movies. I did not know Leslie Nielsen from the Naked Gun fame is the captain. And I've watched it as a child, but until I was an adult and realized it was him, I only know him as, as Naked Gun from the movies. You know, I never watched much else with him in it. You know, I've seen all of his movies since Naked Gun came out, but The Forbidden Planet is also the first appearance of Robbie the Robot. Um, I used to have like a three-foot Robbie the Robot, and I wished I wouldn't have got rid of that. I sold it for almost a thousand, so I, I the money was incredible. I only paid like fifty for it. But the point of it is, though, that those are the type of things I like. Um, I've done stop motion animation, and I love movies and all of that sort of thing. So, anyway, those are what I would keep. I'd keep the old '70s stuff, uh, many of that kind of stuff. I used to collect a ton of Disney, and I still have most of mine. When I worked at Disney, uh, MGM Studios, well, it's not in MGM Studios. When I worked at Disney, it used to be called Disney MGM Studios. And right in the front, when you first enter the park, and I know Marty and several other folks in here will know exactly. Carl, if he's in the house, probably knows. Sid Kuangas. When you first walk in, it's been so long since I've been there. I think it's on the left side. And I think when you walk in the, the main entrance gates, on the right side to Disney MGM Studios, I think is the cart and the stroller rental. Again, it's been like 20 years since I've been there, but that's what it used to be. Um, and then a left was Sid Kuanga. Sid Kuanga sold um, movie props, and they'd get rid of a ton of this stuff. And also what I was lucky enough, for those who've worked there or know the inner workings of Disney, in the tunnel system in the Magic Kingdom, there is a... a um, 
bargain basement, it's called, and it was only for employees. And everything in the bargain basement was at 90% or better off of the original price that a customer would have paid for it in the park system. And a lot of times they would just dump off pounds of this stuff when I when I worked there into the bargain basement and never even take it up 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 in I call it upstairs we always used to call it upstairs but take it up to Sid Cuangas and a lot of that stuff they had probably thousands of them because they it was the warehouse they were pulling them from their publicity and advertising warehouse I've seen the building I've been in there a couple of times way way back I did some work for animation and a lady named Fran Kirsten back in those days she was head of ink and paint for all of the animation department and I did some work including some artwork for for uh, Disney back in those days I did um, a lot of painting and some mural work for them and I did uh, Small World Peter Pan's Flight artwork. I did sticker artwork and stuff like that. Long, long time ago. Uh, long, long time ago, yeah, in a galaxy far, far away from where I'm at right now, I guess. Um, Grove City, Ohio. Welcome, Joyce. Good to have you in the house. What is Patreon? Patreon is a paid membership page, I guess you would say. Um, if you watch the videos, any of them before the commercial I got at the very end there, all the names are folks who have um, graciously helped sponsor all of my videos. Um, I do specific content on there too. I will have, um, I will have a uh, page here on YouTube where you can see some videos like that, but the majority of them on on Patreon aren't uh, opened. Uh, if you're enjoying the conversation, please hit that like button down there. Uh, again, we always get those haters on here. But if you are enjoying the conversation, please hit the thumbs up there for us. Uh, let's see here. Hey, Michelle, how are you doing? Good to see you in the house today. Underdigger Oakley, how are you doing? Information is golden these days. The more information you know, the better you will be. Donald's Discoveries, how are you doing, Donald? Good name there, of course. Any old stamps? No stamps today, Duncan. No stamps at all. I didn't even get anything uh, from China at all, other than maybe some stills in here. Um, I probably won't even look through these for months at this point. I haven't even looked through the last lot of photos, all of them. I looked through some, and we've sold enough to get our money back, but I haven't even looked through the last lot of them I got. Um, just like comic books. I've gotten now three big comic book hauls in, say, the last, I don't know, six, seven weeks or so. And I haven't even looked through the second or the third lot. I've barely got through the first one. I keep saying I'm not going to buy anymore. And, and unfortunately, I, I guess I say unfortunately, but I keep getting calls from pickers and stuff. I haven't went to any sales or anything, but I keep getting, and I'm taking the picker calls just because I don't want to lose the guys when, um, you know, they have something really good. Or if I, at some point, I'll need some more merchandise coming in. So anyway, uh, let's pop on down here. Thanks, Annie. Thanks, Annie, as well, for the, the info for that. Christmas plan, Charles, was in place already last year um, in October, so just FYI. I don't see anything changing because of the pandemic-wise. Uh, if anything, Christmas next year will probably be even bigger than this past year, and this past Christmas was the busiest I've ever had. Pandemic or not, it's been the busiest we've had ever uh, Dollar-wise or any other way you can think of. It was the best one I have had. Just because this coming up season, pandemic should be mostly over. Um, in this state, as of, I think, the 29th, anybody is open for the shots. Now, getting an appointment is going to be the other thing because I can't get one. I've been trying for days and days. I was lucky enough to, to get my mom one and an aunt, but... We've been looking since they opened it up for my age group. Uh, my wife's age group opens up this Friday, and then the 29th, everybody can get them. Above, anybody above 16 in the state. They've got some mega numbers. They've released a ton of people. Uh, it's like into the 15 million. It's huge numbers they've done here. Gridley, have you sold uh, vintage rock t-shirts all the time? I don't anymore just because I don't source. I don't go to places where I see that stuff anymore. I've sold hundreds of vintage t-shirts. I have some of my own original ones from when, when I was a kid. Um, I've got a real nice Raglan white snake shirt that I would never sell. That was my first major big time concert I went to. Um, and it was before um, Still the Night came out. It was it was just it was the tour before Still the Night's tour. And I think they were still doing slip of the tongue, if anybody knows White Snake. I've met David Coverdale a couple times. He was very, very down-to-earth person. Um, big fan, big fan. Um, 
Coverdell and Page when he did his other uh, like single shot group with him and Jimmy Page. That's a good album too. Um, Shake Your Tree. It's a real good song. A lot of stuff on there. I, I love music. Music is is what but makes me move. I guess anyway, I, it's motivational. Everything. Music is the big thing for me. My master's uh, thesis is on music, um, the influence of music on the masses, and I did a huge thing on it. Um, that's that's my thing. I've done a lot of inner workings on music and tie-ins with um, uh, cultural American cultural studies is what my PhD would be if I decide still to go. I did submit something the other day, FYI. Um, just thought maybe I would look into it and see. I'm just going to see what happens. I may still go. For, it'll be at Bowling Green, uh, BG State University, Bowling Green, Ohio. But anyway. Hey, Rob, how are you doing, Mr. Mister Macca? I won't try and butcher your name, Rob. I, I won't do it. I, my, my vision's not the greatest, and I'm not sure what the last two letters are. Thank you, though, for the kind words, of course. And he can only deal with Victorian clowns still make me uncomfortable. Victorian clowns are more demented than than most of the modern day clowns. It, it literally is like, what's, there's a movie. I think it's Scarecrow. It reminds me of some of the clowns from back then. It's a 70s movie. Dirt Road Picker, well, thank you. Welcome as well. Eric Hughes, how are you doing? Lucky Finds. Let me try and get down here because I know I'm terrible sometimes getting to everybody. Duncan VR, you must be an old e bear. Yeah, I don't. If if I hit a point, I'm sure you're talking about the listing aspect of it. If if let's say I list it and it doesn't sell in an auction, I just roll it over to a bin and then it sits there forever. If I start something and it's auction and it doesn't sell after two or three runs, they just go to bin and then I'm done with them. I never look at them again. Um, a lot of people say, well, why do you let them run so long? Every day of the week, I sell something from 2016, 2017, like uh, quantity. You know, it doesn't matter. All the work's done. All my investment's done. And probably 99% of every single listing that's in my store that you can see has been paid for already. You know, even the massive amounts of like buttons, man, I, I just, I've paid for all of the buttons and we've already invested another $1,200 just this week. Um, I'm at like 672 pounds, I think we weighed it out, in buttons. All military or uniform buttons, which is just a phenomenal mass. I'm like in button heaven, I guess, because it's a big thing for me. I've always been into buttons. Me and the wife, 20, she's 25 years ago or better, she's going to be more than that, almost 30 years ago, went to button shows. We, we were members of the National Button Society, the Florida State Button Society, and on and on and on. You know, I used to advertise. I used to go to the shows I've set up. I was a dealer at tables before for many different things. Did the flea markets, done estate sales, all that kind of stuff myself. Um, I, I love this. I love the stuff that I would collect, I guess. So if I can like sell buttons, which again, I've got a massive collection of my own, mostly Civil War, in before, down to the Revolutionary War era buttons. Uh, I have a couple Continental, Colonial, USA intertwines in my collection. Um, but again, that's what I keep. So I don't mind selling them. I know them. I know the, them like the back of my hand. That's probably one of the best areas that I know other than like Victorian trade cards. Movie items I'm pretty darn good with too. Again, I worked at a movie theater back when I was 17 for many years. And ever since then I've collected, I used to subscribe to Big Real Magazine. I'm sure there's not many old timers that know what that is, but the 80s, that would be where you would sell or buy any of the stuff I'm showing you. Any of this stuff would be bought or sold there. And it was a national one. Back before eBay was around, uh, the entertainment collectibles would be done at like mall shows. You'd go to a mall and there'd be a big show. The whole mall would have tables in the middle of between stores and all that. And that's still around here. They still do some. They'll have flea markets in the malls. but And it would be entertainment related ones only. Like a big toy show, but with entertainment collectibles in general. And Big Reel would be where you'd go back in the day. And like with toys, all the folks, everybody goes to eBay these days for toys. It used to be a uh, newspaper magazine style thing called the Big Red Toy Box. And then they had a site online and that's where everybody would go for toys. Now they're on eBay and that's the only place they go from what I think. Um, I do have a video that I shot on probably Europe's largest toy store, and uh, they're vintage toys. We're going to show you that shortly. It's already been edited. I had somebody finish it for me uh, today, actually, and we've bought from them. And I'm going to show you a few secrets on how you can glean some information from their site on pricing and a bunch of other stuff. Um, I've dealt with them many times. I'll, I'll show you their card. I'll show you items on there. 
or somebody who sells on eBay. They've got a big account on eBay as well. Um, and I think that'll be interesting for a lot of folks. We are real close to having our own toy lines out. Real close, real close. And this has nothing to do with, I probably won't even talk about them very much on, on here. It's not something I'm trying to promote through here. I've already got toy vendors that will pick them up for us. So I'm not really worried um, on that, but um, I'm heavy into this kind of stuff. I, I lived at comic uh, and old toy shops when I was a teenager. Even when I met my wife, there was the Atomic Feral in um, Orlando area. I don't even remember where it was at, but I used to know the owners of, of it, and everybody used to come in there, and they'd sign on. It was a really fun time. That's I love that kind of stuff. Then in uh, music-wise, Rock and Roll Heaven in, in uh, Orlando on Orange Drive, if anybody knows what that is. No idea if it's even still open, but that's where I used to buy records in Florida. I think we bought every Bowie that, that he had when, when we used to live in there. But anyway, let's move down to some more questions. Uh, Tony Curtis, very good, very good, Marty. That is exactly who that is. The the Great Race, if you haven't seen that movie, we've watched it with the kids before. Um, it's a really good movie. Um, the Great Leslie, Tony Curtis plays in that movie, and his teeth shine, and if he gets wet, his hair's instantly dry. He's always wearing bright white suits and stuff. It's, it's a decent movie. I like some of the older stuff. Can't knock it. Yeah, you're probably an antique eBayer there, but I, you're not that old, Duncan. I think I'm pretty sure I'm older than you, if I'm not mistaken. Bobo the Clown, yeah, not the same Bobo, but yeah. Uh, Stardust member 1967. Hey, Dave, Midwest Pickers in the house as well. Welcome, welcome. Another fellow channeler, just like Jiminy Flippet. Marty's channel. How long does it uh, generally take for vintage items to sell? Depends on the item. I've listed some stuff today, and it's already sold before I even went live. So it depends on what you're selling. It depends on what you're selling. Some items I could sell pretty much immediately if I put lower prices on them, but I don't care what the average is on, on certain things. I don't care what other people sell the things for. Now, some people say hey, you're ripping people off, you're overpricing. I price by what the price has always been for what I am selling. I've sold this same stuff for 30 years almost, and that's the price you got in antique malls. That's the price I got at a flea market. That's the price I got when I had antique booths or had my own business or did the sales or any of that stuff. That's the price I still put on the items. Obviously, some of them are raised to compensate for inflation, but that's the prices I put on things. You know, that's, that's, that's me. I price by my own personal knowledge on most of these, and it hasn't done me wrong. I don't really, again, care if three other people price it at the same price because, again, there's a follow-me method, which is what most people seem to do. They'll look up something in the comps. They'll see that one may be sold for 10 bucks. They've got the same item, so they think, oh, I'll put it up for 10 bucks. Now, me, I'll see one sold. I'll go, well, it's only sold for 10 bucks. Well, I could probably get 30 or 40 out of that same item. They only price it at 10 bucks. You can tell on Terapeak. You don't have to wonder if they did it as an auction or a bin. You can instantly tell. So for folks who aren't figuring out which is the best way to sell it, look at Terapeak. I mean, you've got a whole year's worth of information on Terapeak telling you what's the best way to sell it. Not only that, you can look at the trending reports now eBay used to be terrible on on you know data. 30 day or 90 days is not enough. Completed listings are only 90 days. After that, they're gone. You don't see them after that. Um, the only bad part with Terapeak is they gave us the ability to blow up the the thumb when you can't look at the listing. But then now it's gone again. They, it was there for a little while and now it's gone. I have no comments on why it disappeared. They offered it as a service. My guess is now they're charging you to see all of that, kind of like WorthPoint. We all know, well, I don't know if everybody knows, but obviously WorthPoint buys our listing information from eBay. eBay is not going to just give it to them. It's proprietary information, so they have to be selling it to them. That's why eBay owns everybody's pictures the minute that you post them to eBay. Unless you have a piece of paper from the U.S. government that says you have a patent, a trademark, or something on it, um, anything like that on it, or a copyright of any form. Other, without that piece of paper, without a number on it stating from the government what yours is, eBay can do anything they want with your photos. And that's what they do. They sell your listings to other sites, such as PopPsych. Um, there's probably a dozen or more that, that they do that to. I can't imagine anybody getting that information for free. And eBay's not going to do it. There's just no way. They barely give it to us for free. And it's not even for free uh, when you look at it. So, 
I find some Inferium sells better with rips and tears. I don't mind if it's ripped or torn. That's exactly uh, the point there with the sheet music video I just put up yesterday. I don't care if they're tattered, torn, ripped, names, tapes, punch holes, or anything else. If it's a good sheet music, again, I'm not talking condition. I'm talking about the music itself. That's what counts. Now, I can't read sheet music even. I have no clue on reading sheet music whatsoever. But I know how to tell what's what in the type of music it is. I can instantly tell that sort of thing. I at least had somebody help me with stuff like that, the beat, the tempo, and all that kind of stuff. It matters when you're selling some. Usually the earlier foxtrots, which are jazz, will do the best on anything like that. We've sold sheet music for 25, 30 years at this point. Um, I've got, I don't know, a couple thousand up maybe right now, probably have that many more that I want to list. Um, we've probably bulk sold out another 5,000 sheets, um, in the last say six months or less. Last year, I probably processed 24,000 sheet musics, sheets of sheet music, I guess you would say. That sounds like a lot, but I've passed up a whole bunch. People ask, well, where do you find it? Church sales are usually one of the best sources for me because they usually blow it out dirt cheap. Um, estate sales, almost always. Craigslist ad, once in a while I would find some. Again, I'm not looking for purchases, so I don't look on any of those sources everybody else is looking. I haven't been to a garage sale, haven't been to a flea market, um, haven't been to um, uh, geez, an estate sale or anything. Uh, nothing like that. I've been to a couple auctions. That's usually about the best I would do these days. I've got so much, again, this isn't a brag. I just got so much inventory. I don't, I wished I had more people to list it. Um, anyway, I did lose two, as I said, with the pandemic. So we're, I shouldn't say understaffed. I'm still at eight, eight employees, but that's cutting the four family members, me, my wife, my two kids, and then four other people do help us. Um, again, for B flaves, there's no way to tell what something's going to sell. Now, if I buy certain items, I can tell you pretty much right off the bat that it'll be gone the first day. List. Again, it depends on what it is. There's certain things that I always sell over and over again uh, constantly. If I had a lobby card set from Star Wars, the original release, it would be gone the first day. Um, Revenge of the Jedi still, uh, our lobby card set with a Revenge of the Jedi title card, gone the first day. Uh, I mean, stuff like that's gone instantly. A rare action figure. Um, rare Micronauts on, on a card or something. Rare box Micronauts. Uh, any Takara Microman will be gone immediately. Uh, uh, vintage original metal die-cast Shogun wires by Poppy. Uh, or any of the Takari metal die-cast figures. Any of the early Ultraman. I, I love finding the Ultraman. I very rarely find those, but I grew up watching Ultraman. Battle of the Planets, G-Force. That's another one I grew up on. So any of that sort of thing, I know to fly off the handle. If I had original Star Wars figures, they're gone. If I list them the same day, if I want. Otherwise, I'll price them a little higher and just hang on to them. I don't care how quickly something sells. Um, again, it depends on where you're at in your business. If you're just now getting into a business of reselling, you're going to have to probably move stuff quick. You need the turnover. You need to be able to move stuff. You can't afford for most of your items to be long tail. On my hand, I can afford for every single item I sell to sit here for who knows when. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Um, and it doesn't matter because I have the volume. And when you have volume, it sells. Um, well, I, I shouldn't say it always sells, but I have collectibles mostly. I used to do clothing. So I have bins and bins and bins of clothing. We used to scan books and all that sort of thing. I've moved to areas that have no slow time or at least very minuscule amount compared to like a clothing. Winter coats are off the shelf now. So if you're selling winter coats, you got to move stuff around, storage and time, and or you mark them down and try and blow them out and hope to get some better ones next year. Collectors collect. So all year round, Duncan's in here still. He'll probably tell you. Collectors collect. They, they don't care if it's summer, winter, fall, spring. They don't care. If I got something that's going to fill a spot in their collection, they're going to buy it. doesn't matter. doesn't matter what it costs. Most people who are collecting most of the stuff that I sell have expendable money. They've got extra income. Most of them are older. A lot of the folks who buy from me may be from universities. Um, art companies buy a lot from us. Movie companies buy a lot of the vintage stuff for like wrapper samples so they can print their own for movies and things like that old signs i sell to places like that and then you know collectors and historical societies i've i've been very selective on what i sell i've learned the areas that i sell in over these years again i've been doing this for 30 years almost so what i sell i know 
I don't know a lot of stuff. I don't know much about sports or clothing. I very rare. I know much about clothing anymore. I do like the Harley Davidson's 3D emblem and stuff like that. I know all that kind of stuff. The ones I still run into rarely, but I do. Um, you know, I do mess with silk bowling shirts, silk uh, Hawaiian shirts. Of course, those always sell for us. Um, if the kids don't end up keeping them, the kids have been keeping half the, the vintage. People still bring me stuff. I still have locals that will pick up some vintage stuff for me. We do buy stuff for personal things, too. So anyway, um, vintage items sell too fast for me. No matter how many more I buy in, they sell. It, it Again, it depends on what you're selling. Stamps are pretty hot right now. Um, I haven't listed hardly any stamps, I hate to say it. I've been keeping so many these days. I did get a huge assortment in the other day. Well, not the other day. It's been three weeks or so, but I don't I don't list those anymore. I just I I put them aside. Maybe later on, ten years from now, I might be bored with what I'm selling now and I might list some stamps. I don't know. I list Cinderella's, which are not really stamps, but yeah. Uh Cinderella's are like fantasy pieces. Um not necessarily like unofficial some of them can be printed by governments and things like that but they're not made for postage they're just made in the exact size shape and form of a stamp and they look like stamps but they're 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 not really technically stamps you can stick them on an envelope but it doesn't count as postage i guess that's the gist of it they're cinderellas they're listed as an ebay if you want to know and see what they are and there's probably a couple million of them up on ebay at any given time um, because they're highly collectible we've sold poster stamps for geez i think the highest i got was 650 and actually it was a clown from like 1860s or 70s it was a clown advertisement from a circus performer um it was kind of one of those oddball things but it was a clown he, he did he this clown was uh he did three different characters and that was the the skit that he did duncan trust me i don't ever care to worry about a spider again <clears throat> I'll just throw this out there because I'm sure people are wondering, just curiosity's sake. I was bitten by a brown recluse and bedridden for two months. And ever since then, my skin turned necrotic. I, I've got some major issues ever since then. I've had to give up. It attacked my liver and my pancreas. So I lost some ability to produce certain types of um, digestive issues. So I, I, dairy is like off limits these days because of that. And some of the liver, uh, anyway, it's, it's been a, it's been a nightmare. I thought I was finally done with years and years ago, but anyway, again, if you are enjoying the conversation, please hit the thumbs up down there for us. We've got 172 people in house. I got 66 likes on there. Thumbs up on there. Uh, let's see here. Beastmaster is my vintage, lol. Hey, Jennifer, how you doing? I think you're talking about the movie or are you talking about a TV series? I'm not really sure on that one. I know their Beastmaster was a sci-fi movie, I think from the 80s. I think there was one. Unicorns don't lie. Developing uh, photographs from negatives. You can't sell mass produce negatives if you buy negatives unless you have the rights to those negatives you have to be given those rights if they're negatives they have to be i think you have to wait 99 years after the person who took them died for them to be in public domain i'm almost sure that's what it is i don't make copies of anybody's negatives i just sell the negatives um I don't even make a copy to sell them. I'll just use uh, one of my graphics programs to turn the negative into a positive, and it looks just like a photo, and I advertise it as a negative. I do not make and mass-produce copies of stuff. I don't want the risk, and I don't want somebody coming and suing me later for why is my family on a postcard or something like that. Just FYI, your call on what you do, but legally-wise, you do not have the rights to do it unless somebody gave them to you or you can prove the date of their death and that it's been so many years just FYI. That's how the laws work. You can look into yourself. I got a lawyer. We have a couple that, that handle our stuff for us. Dufex foil prints. That was like a, a printing style. It was printed on like a small, well, it's thicker than uh, aluminum foil. It's stiffer, I want to say. They're usually all black and white and they're printed. The ones I've seen, I don't know if it's the exact same thing, but they're halftones. Dot matrix printed, if you know what that is. Look up halftone. If, if they're little dots, we're talking about the same thing. It's just like uh, cyanotypes. It's the same kind of thing, basically. Um, a cyanotype is blue. It's like a postcard that the whole scene is blue. And there's ambrotypes. 
Well, well, it's not ambro. Yeah, it is ambro type. It's not the ambro types that printed on glass. This is like a paper printed ambros uh, process where instead of blue, it's all um, red, like a sepa, a sepa tone. Sepa tone is not a black and white technique. It's a sepa. It's a light brown in color. And those are um, another just version of colored printing, I guess you would say, in, in a color like sepa. You've got sepa, red, blue. I think there's a green one, if I'm not mistaken, too. And I haven't seen one of those in person, but I have a whole bunch of Ciano types. I got a whole, in fact, album of them in here uh, right this minute. But they're all in blue. The whole thing, the whole image is blue. There's no black, white. Well, there's some white in there, but it's all blue, the the coloring, the the shading and everything else like that. I'd imagine that's what it's like. If, if it's um, like on a real bright foil, it's probably from the 50s or 60s. Um, again, I don't know what you got, so I'm just giving you the best best advice I could say. Hey, Artie, Mike, how are you doing? There is a new video, as I said, for those. I see quite a few more uh, Patreons, and there is a new video up as of today. Um, one of our fellow Patreons posted some images in there. And in fact, that video, there's another image that another Patreon posted up in there on a... Um, well, I won't get into the topic because I don't want to offend anybody. But the, there's another image in there that kind of ties into one of the images that we discussed in that video. So you might want to look at the images on there before you watch the video, anybody in there. Do copies of the movie photo sell? You can't legally do that, and I would never want to do that because that is a crime, and they will go after you. I do not copy anybody else's material whatsoever. It's against the law. Just FYI, don't do it, Gail. Uh, a bit crazy. How are you doing? What platform should a beginner use to resell? eBay would be your best choice, in my opinion. Um, again, I know people complain about the fees, but in all honesty, it's it's I'm paying a little less, a hair less, prior to the new update than I was with PayPal overall. Now, some some I'm paying a hair more, some I'm paying a hair less, but overall average, I'm paying 0.02% uh, less, basically. It's not a lot, but it's a couple hundred a month, so I, I can't complain. Uh, were you the Little Mermaid VHS? I was not an animator for Disney. I did apply. Um, I've got a friend who worked there and is an animator, and his name was in the movies. Um, his name is Saul Blinkoff. He's somebody I knew way back in the day, too. He's the one who actually got me into the animation studio through the uh, process in there. Part of the reason I know Fran Kirsten, um, plus a boss of mine who ran the Fantasyland attractions area, knew her and hooked me up, and I did the mural work for all of Fantasyland at that point. Um, there's a huge mural I did. In fact, I have po uh, photos posted, I think, somewhere on my Instagram page of some of the mural work. I did for Disney, taken in Disney. You can see me in a Disney uniform, so it's not like a fantasy thing. Um, I used to do artwork around in the area. I did uh, the McDonald's and I Drive in Orlando. I did all the characters. I did them with uh, another person. I go, oh, geez, what was her name? Marsha Mylander, I want to say, was the local artist in Florida. I used to do murals for her. I want to say that's her name, but she got me. I did a gig with her. We did the I Drive McDonald's, and I used to, I had to stand up on a like a twenty foot ladder in the main section. There's a huge tall ceiling in there. It's a two story McDonald's, an International Drive in Orlando. It's just down the street from Universal Studios. But I painted all the characters on the wall. McDonald himself and. Uh, all the characters. I literally did them all. I hated that job. I hated it. I had to stand up on the ladder painting with people at like 2 o'clock in the morning. Lots of tour groups didn't care if they knocked the ladder over. It was just a nightmare scenario. But anyway, I do know somebody personally who did work on The Little Mermaid, though it has nothing to do with the VHS tape. Uh, let's see. R. Hoffman, how are you doing? From Brazil. One of these days I wouldn't mind getting down there. Tyler, how are you doing? Do you think including a thank you card with will help improve your feedback on eBay. I don't, if I buy something off eBay, in all honesty, I, I don't care about a card. I don't, it's it's nothing to me. Um, we usually have feedback, of course, for stuff like that, but mostly it's clothing or something else. Um, your call, I don't know. I'm not, I don't care what, what card it is in there. If I want something, I'm buying it for a specifics. I'm not worried about who it's coming from, I guess. I mean, maybe that's bad or wrong, but for me, I look at feedback. If they've got good feedback, I'm just wanting the item. I don't want some some other thing. Most, I'm not, I'm, I am brand loyal to some extent, but not not like that, I guess. Um, I'm, I'm weird, I guess, I don't know. But I don't, I'm not I'm not big up on, on including thank you cards. I don't think I've ever done a thank you card of anything like that for somebody purchasing. I just take care of the service and, and make sure it's wrapped to the T 
Um, make sure it's sealed in plastic. I don't care what it is. Everything's sealed in plastic. Everything is wrapped in cardboard. Sometimes I'll order like a price guide or a book or something and they'll just throw it in a bag. That aggravates the heck out of me or a, a paper uh, envelope, you know, like the manila ones, though, that color. And they won't seal it. So if it gets rained on, the book's ruined. I, 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 that's like one of the pet peeves of me when I get something in like that. I just don't leave feedback if, if that happens. I just, I'm not one to leave bad feedback. I just don't want any, any uh, issues. Or any, I just don't do it very often, but I'm not saying I haven't. Uh, Patty Stevens, how are you doing? Found another spaghetti uh, piece today, this time an Asian girl. Uh, Belle holding red spaghetti flowers. Now, some of them, it ha for, for it to be spaghetti, it literally has to be strands. Sometimes what you'll run into are, are ceramic lace. And I don't know if it's a dip process where they literally dip um, in, in like the, the, the slip. They'll dip some um, lace and slip, and then it'll actually harden, and then it'll fire it. Um, some of the flowers I see are just, they're not necessarily spaghetti. I'm not saying what you got is or isn't because I can't see it, but sometimes it's just added petals. It's not quite the same thing. There's different markets. I'm not saying they're not a market for it, but there are different markets. Those are two different things technically, depending on what you're talking about. Base, car, uh, base card collector. I noticed vintage Tonka trucks are selling really good on eBay right now. They've been selling for a while here. There's a couple of YouTube channels that will repair them, and I think that has a little bit to do with some of the prices. Some of the ones I've been seeing sold were repaints or, or uh, repairs or uh, something along that line. I, I can't say most of them because I haven't looked at them. I do have two Tonka trucks sitting out here. I've got the Tonka 19, well, I think it's a 64, the fire truck. Needs some work, so I've, I've been always debating it if I would take it apart and fix it myself. I haven't. I almost debated on sending it into one of the other channels, just for the heck of it. Let me pop down here. Chris, random, awesome, fine. Thanks for all that. Thank you very kindly. From Michigan. I know Michigan very well. We have a cottage up in Lewiston, if anybody's familiar with that area. Inherited it from my grandmother years back, but it's in Lewiston, Michigan, um, East Twin Lake. Anybody knows where that is? Um, it's an A-frame, too. It's an old uh, log cabin A-frame built in, like, 1910. There's a map on the wall of the whole place, including the lake, when there was nothing else there, hardly. Uh, Retrohead, do you have any tips on how to safely get musty smell out of items? I don't buy them. I'll just give you that right off the bat. I don't buy anything with that smell. The only thing that I have found that will even partially get them off of least clothing, with paper I can do much better. I can get most all of it out on paper, but it's a long process. But paper's doable. Clothing-wise, especially if it's got any kind of mold, it's, it's just there's nothing you can do if there's any stains on it. The best bet I can tell you is some coffee beans. The Crunch up or take a hammer and crunch up some coffee beans. Put those items in a sealed airtight bag with the coffee beans, a bunch of them, enough to just like a bag or two of them, cheap ones, really awful, really bad smelling coffee beans. You know, the it's enough to draw out the odor. And then from there, I usually take it out. If it still has an odor, I'll keep them in there sometimes for weeks. And then at the end of the day, then I shave with a, a peeler. Irish Springs, the Ivor, that soap that they have, it's got a real pungent smell to it. And a bunch of those shavings I'll stick in a sock. And in that same, no, that's not the same bag, but I'll take another airtight bag. The items will go back in there. That sock will go in there with, with all those shaved um, soap. And then they'll sit there for a very long time. Um, there's some lights and stuff that, like the UV lights I see people try to use and stuff like that. After I pull out the soap, and it, sometimes it's months down the road, I'll just let it sit there for a long time. Then they hang outside in the summertime or sit outside somewhere for a while and let the sun beat down on them. Usually most of the scent is gone. Again, this is paper we're talking about. There's one more step I can do that will mostly eliminate everything else after that point. But I'm not going to give it out because that's one of my inside things. Um, I've spent years trying to figure out how to get that out on paper. Again, clothing, I've never found anything that will totally get out. I just avoid it. Just like anything with mold on it, I just pass it up. Unless it's like some major pricey thing. Uh, Mystified Dunn, how are you doing? Vivian from Copenhagen, Denmark, welcome. Well, glad to have you. Glad to have you. Thank you very kindly. That Chicago guy. You went to Bowling Green. Wow. I've taken a couple classes there. I, I graduated from UT 
Um, I've got two degrees from UT. I have a uh, bachelor's in science and research and communication, well, not bachelor's in science, a BA in research and communication, and I've got an MA in research and communi communication as well, and I've got an AS in uh, IT. So, Pre-war Lionel is what you really want. There's a ton of sites, um, Hayward, uh, that go over Lionel. You can find prices for almost any Lionel. The numbers all match. Everybody uh, has tons of different sites out there. Lionel, I never have any problems pricing, except the pre-war ones sometimes are crazy priced, and I usually just would put those in a, a, a auction. Now, I haven't even bought... Well, I'll take that back. I got some sitting here right now. I usually don't buy much train stuff anymore. I, my son's got a friend uh, who's in an HO, and I usually just sell him straight out most of the HO stuff. Um... I do have some, as I said, though. Here, I forgot. I do. I did buy some not too long ago. I haven't done a video on that, but I, the one of these days I will have to. I know I've got one that covers some HO stuff. Nicholas Tracy, how are you doing? I start out with uh, all books now. I sell paper constantly. Well, glad to hear it's been helpful. Yeah, space and storage. You can't beat the space and storage. Again, if you're enjoying the conversation, I have 160 plus people in house, 93 likes. I'd love to get to that 100 mark like I usually do before the show ends. Uh, let's see here. Eric Hughes, always looking for buttons. I found some metal detectors. Yeah, I metal. I, my favorite metal detector is a Golden Saber II, and that is by Tesoro. And I know that they have closed down. I was talking to somebody else the other day. They went went under a while ago. I know White's did as well. I have that one, and I have. Geez, it's an Acer II or something like that. I've got two. I love the Golden Saber II. That one has found me a ton of money. Uh, I found some really nice gold. The first day I, I took that one out, I found a gold ring at an uh, old source site that I'd been to. I don't know how many times. Uh, we found some other gold at that same place, just junk stuff. But this one was the best thing, and it paid for my detector that same day I bought it. Well, I didn't. not the same day I bought it. I should say the same day I used it for the first time. It takes 9 volts, and I didn't have any. Otherwise, I would have used it long before when I first took it out. Uh, bought a 25-pound box full of plastic soldiers, blah, blah, blah. How would you process and sell them on eBay? Well, Shane, um, Marks are the only ones that would really be worth the big money out of there. There's a couple other brands, but pull out the Marks and sell the Marks. The rest of them would just go in a big lot. Some of the Marks can sell individually for a couple hundred bucks. There's some single individual, single marks figures that could sell for eight or nine hundred dollars. So I always, always look for them. Um, like the Marks um, stretcher set. I don't know how many of those I've sold for 40 bucks plus. I got another one here right now from about two weeks ago. I've shown them in videos. It's it's two Marks figures, no base, solitary standing figures, one in the front, one in the back. There's a separate stretcher between the two that slides through holes in their hands, so they both hold it. And then there's a wounded soldier that sits on. That's the four-piece set. That's one I always look for, and I have sold every single one of those I've ever gotten. That'll sell quick. That's one of those things that will sell the first day you put it up. You know, four forty bucks. I don't think I've ever sold one of those less than that. You're going to have to dig through and sort through and make sure you know which are marks, which may be Auburn. Maybe they're all new. It's hard to say. I don't know what you got, but be careful on some of those on price-wise. Just because it's 25 pounds, if it's all new China stuff, you're not going to get hardly anything for it. Just FYI, I never buy anything unless it's vintage, and they're marked figures usually, I, and, or I know what they are. There's some that aren't marked that I can tell what they are because I've bought so many of them, like earlier hard plastic, um, sci-fi, and stuff like that, Tom Corbett and a lot of those kind of things. Um, Donald's Treasure, where do you go to find out about local annual flea markets or church sales? Call around church. There, most of the church sales will advertise either on Craigslist or in your local newspaper. And if they don't do the main local newspaper, um, do I have one? No, I don't even have one laying around here. Around here, there's like three little newspapers. They're like around town or city scene or happening Toledo or something like that. And then there's county ones too. So usually those are free at the library around here, or you can sometimes get a, a, them free uh, locally in other places, or even get a subscription to them. I don't pay for any of that stuff. I grab them when I drive by the library usually, um, and that gives me a three or four more printed air, uh, options to source items from. A lot of them will list like smaller stuff. 
Uh, around here, the newspaper is really expensive to list your sale in. That's why I don't see as many in the newspaper. But most of the churches, I think they get a discount or get them free because it's a charity thing. So that's why the, usually the church sales around here are in the papers and stuff. Craigslist. I know the ones that have it every year, uh, year around here, and I know which ones to go to. There's some that you, there'll be a line out the door before they ever open up on day one. Um, you know, it just depends. That's usually the best, best sourcing. Uh, for flea markets, there's only so many flea markets, you know. Look in the newspaper. Look online. Just type in flea market in the city you're in or the county. Uh, I can tell you where everyone is around here, probably within, a, say, a 200, 250-mile range, honestly. I know flea markets all the way down to Columbus, Ohio, and all the way up past Detroit, all the way up towards Ann Arbor. So, you know, and heading towards in, in the other side, too, east and west, too. We've got, like, a 250-mile range, basically, is about the most I personally uh, travel these days. I try never to go away, pretty much, unless the family's with me uh, overnight anymore. I don't drive at night anymore with my eyes, either, so... Uh, good for you, Bob. That's probably the best thing I could say is get the shots. I know some there's some people worried about it, but, you know, I, I've looked into it very, very, very much so. Um, we are, we're selective. We have two options here. If I go to one place, I can get one, one type of shot, and I go to another, I can get another. So we're taking the one that has the best rate, the best everything, and the, the, the best issues with it. Chicago Lady Wall, thank you very kindly. Day Night, uh, Lion Brewery, Cincinnati, Metal Coaster, Patton. Uh, I'd have to see it. I'd have to see it to see if it's a legit deal. A patent date doesn't mean it was made then, just FYI. There's things that'll have a patent date of, you know, 19th century date on it. It may have been made in 1985. So I'm just cautious. I don't recognize... Lion Brewery in Cincinnati. The only reason I say that because Lion Coffee is there's a there's one in Cincinnati and in Toledo and Lion Coffee. I couldn't imagine them having two names. It's possible. It's very possible, but that just seems kind of odd. I'd have to see it. I'd have to see it physically. I don't see them using many coasters back then either. That's why I'm questioning on the date on that. Uh, Worth Point is not my favorite. I've never paid for Worth Point in my life ever. Never. Never needed it. Um, Again, I, I've got hundreds of, of favorite places saved on my, my laptops that have uh, pricing places, you know, um, cigar label price uh, prices and you name it. There's a specialty site out there usually for almost anything. Um, you know, I use a ton of, of specialty sites, boards, reddits and things like that. You know, it's just taken time. So I've shared those in Patreon. I think I've showed you at least some of my massive amounts of, of favorite places for that kind of stuff. But we're going to cut it off in just a few more minutes here. I've got to take out um, my eyes for the evening. I can only deal with it so long. Do they own your logo if you don't have a trademark on it? I would say 100% yes. Um, uh, you can't put a logo technically on there other than like your your um, your store your store image and stuff like that. Any image you upload to them, they can own. Now, if you put a copyright symbol on it with a date, you can argue that point because legally wise, if I copy put a copyright notice on something, it's copyrighted by the law right now. So eBay could get themselves into trouble with that. I went into a huge long stink with an executive at eBay over this whole issue. I mean, a, I sent him a, a multi-page letter. I've shared it with um, with um, E-Commerce Bytes even. Um, she's She's got a copy of it. We've talked about it before. I don't know if she's going to dig into it too, but eBay snuck that in and it's been on there for a long time. I, I haven't talked to anybody who knew it other than the ones I've told them that. Everybody I've talked to had no clue that eBay owned all that stuff. Even though it's been in the user agreement for like seven years, I think we went back and found it. eBay owns it. They want to be able to use your images for anything they want. They want another eBay uh, seller to be able to use your images. They want. They don't care that people will use an image and not even have a product. eBay's fine with people doing that, apparently, because they didn't even respond after I, I went back and forth. He tried to blow me off. You know, I'm not going to call it any names, but this is an eBay exec who at the time was head of seller support. All of seller support. He couldn't give me a straight answer. He blew me off, didn't respond, and, and on and on and on. I, I told, 
I would give them a chance, and that was my last chance for giving somebody at eBay the time of day with something. I don't respond to any of their service, any of their surveys, or anything anymore. I do like the site. I'm not trying to say the site's not a good site, but the people running it, in my opinion, I don't care if they're long time. I don't care if it's the people they brought back, and I'm not going to mention any names again. The guy running it was the is the only guy they could get who would take the spot after the federal charges were put out. So I, I have no faith in anything that they're doing management-wise. I could honestly see someone like Shopify buying eBay at some point. I'll put it out there. I hear people ask me all the time, oh, do you suspect eBay is going to go under or something? I could see it because they're... They're totally, they're worried about selling high dollar watches and expensive shoes that, um, you know, that the son of one of the eBay execs is in business with. Now, somebody corrected me on that, and I can't remember the guy's name, but he's like Tomkin or something like that. I'll give you that name. His son and him, as what I was told, are in business of selling expensive tennis shoes together. Him, as a board or as a member of the high-up executives, sells tennis shoes with his son that it costs thousands of dollars. They're in business together. Made a fortune, apparently. Um, and there's supposedly no conflict of interest, even though tennis shoes is the only category, mysteriously, that there is no fee to pay. You don't have to pay a fee to list them. There's authentication services. You know, I would be willing to bet you the same thing for guitar. Well, it is the same thing because one of the execs was a reverb guy and they're trying to counter reverb because he used to work there from what I know too. I bet you the same thing goes for watches. They're not worried about the little guy. They're worried about the high dollar ones who can afford to sell $1,000, $5,000 pair of shoes like the executive at eBay's son and him. That's, that's a conflict of interest. And Nike executive was forced to step down over her and her sons doing the exact same thing. But it's okay at eBay. You got me. I would get fired for doing that anywhere else I worked on the planet. I would get fired for conflict of interest for selling something that was sold on my own site who I was working for. That's a conflict of interest. That's a conflict of interest for them to change rules for shoes, I don't care what other sites doing it. And mysteriously, there's a ton of other sites that they could have went after. They picked ones that executives have a say in, have a, a stake in. Anyway, that's just my take. Crooked, you know, I believe that the, the last, again, opinions, I believe the last CEO was involved with the attack on, on people that I personally know now. So, you know, it's, it's very upsetting to me. Uh, that type of thing. They're just not, they're, it's, that's all about the money. They don't care about small people, in my opinion. The site's still good, don't get me wrong. But the people running it are a joke, in my opinion, especially the current guy running eBay right now. He sunk Nook. I know I've said this a million times, but he sunk the Nook. He sunk the Nook. He killed that whole company over the Nook. He himself, look his name up and look up the Nook. Barnes & Noble, I think, is who he used to work for. He, they pulled him from Walmart. He wasn't even that high up. He, he doesn't deserve, in my opinion, my opinion doesn't deserve that type of position. Nothing has changed since he's taken over for the better. It all seems to be going in the opposite direction, in my opinion. They're not going to gain market share. They're, lose, they, they're now second, or I'm sorry, they're now number third. It was Amazon and eBay for longest time ever, the longest time, or years and years and years. Now it's Amazon, Shopify. You know, eBay is losing ground. They're, they're losing. There's no way they're going to gain it with what they're doing. They're, they're nickel and diming. They're allowing all the other stuff to go on. I don't want this to turn into a rant, but that's that's my opinion on that. Um, hey, Craig. Landshark Picker, another fellow channel here. Craig's got some really good videos. We've done one together here as well. I don't do many with other channels very often, so it's just I haven't had time to do stuff like that. But Craig's a real good guy. He's an IT guy too, so I do respect Craig as well. Um, Charlie Peck, what type of postcards are valuable? Do you have posts... I have many postcard videos across the board, all kinds of them. My showman halls. We've sold postcards for like a thousand bucks before. Uh, RPPCs, real picture postcards, are always the best. Day night, yeah, I'd have to see it as I said with the coaster. Just just because it looks like it's old, I would have to see it in person. I would have to, or not in person, at least some good pictures of it. I don't know of many metal coasters from back in those days. I don't know of any coasters from 1880s back there like that. And I've seen tons of stuff. If it was made in Ohio, I've probably seen it. What about my second store? I don't share my second store. RV Butterfly Wholesale and Thrifting, how are you doing? Linda Walker, hello from Arkansas. Do you have video on marbles? I've got a couple. They're old videos, yes. It is on my list to do a new video. 
I try to do videos of the same topics every year or so because things do change. What do I think of poster stamps that are already stuck on pages? It depends on what kind of pages and what kind of poster stamps, I guess. It all comes down to what they are. G. Tolls to Burton, Michigan. Well, thank you very kindly. Yeah, I do go in order. Annie knows that for sure. I know I don't get to all of them, but I do go through them one by one. Uh, this will probably... I don't even know what time it is, honestly. I'm totally brain dead on the time. Yeah, I think we'll have to end it here in just a few minutes. Um, you were talking to our RV Butterfly. You were talking about sheet music yesterday. I came across a 1955 Christmas booklet with lots of sheet music in it. Depends on the Christmas book. I couldn't tell you without seeing it as well, too. You're probably talking about a song book which has sheet music in it. Um, it's not the same type. They're not individual sheets. It's a book of all Christmas songs. I've got probably six or seven of them, uh, of them listed in my store probably right now, honestly. No, maybe I don't. I want to say maybe I sold them at Christmas time. Again, I don't. once the stuff's up, I don't go back and look at it very often. Um, we'll go through and check prices, you know, monthly usually or something along that line, but... I haven't even done a sale. I haven't done a sale since well before Christmas. I haven't done a markdown of sale. I never, ever will do promoted listings ever again. I never will pay eBay for a dime for any of that. And I haven't done them since the whole fiasco with um, Adblocker. I have people ask me that question too, watching that old video still today. That's for me like a year and a half ago, maybe. I don't know how long, but it's a long time ago. I have not done a single solitary promoted listing since then. Never look back. Never hurt me. Again, I sell vintage and collectibles. I wouldn't say don't do it without, you know, if you have clothing or something. But I don't sell stuff that I need to give eBay any more money than I do already. End of story. Um, all right. How are the prices on wicker uh, furniture such as half chair and full round back swinging egg-shaped chair or rocking horses? The egg-shaped chair, I know what you're talking about. Those sell very well, but you got shipping. I don't mess with any of that stuff anymore. I don't mess with anything large at all. So I wouldn't be probably the best person to tell you. Um, wicker used to be hot 10, 15, 20 years ago, but in Florida, it was really hot. I could sell wicker any day of the week in Florida back then patios and they're by around the pool side or something like that. Everybody had wicker back then. Um, again, around here, I don't even see wicker, um, at all. I can't tell you when the last time I seen a piece of wicker reached up here in Ohio. I don't know if it's now just out of fat, I guess they're damaged so easily too. No one repairs them around here. Hardly ever. There used to be a little store that would repair stuff like that maybe 15, 20 years ago, but I'm sure it's gone with the wind. Blender Art. Save cardboard. Amazon box prices will increase a thousand percent. Already a shortage in UK. Not around here. I can get cardboard dirt, dirt cheap. Um, I don't do Amazon boxes, so I wouldn't know about that either. Um, most of what I ship just to, for Amazon, it's either FBA, so I don't have any boxes. I use the Home Depot boxes like everybody else. Um, or I get them from my box guy, too, sometimes, because they're a little cheaper there sometimes. Um, I buy straight boxes, though, as I said, usually from the box manufacturer here in town, and they're cheaper than anywhere else. People ask me, well, how you can get cheap this? How do you get cheap that? Bubble wrap's dirt cheap, just end cuts. I've talked about it many times. Two people who are local here, I hooked them up with them, and they bought end cuts from this guy, too. It's a business around here. End cuts are the best way. I'm just going to go for like three or four more minutes so we can get half past the hour. Um, let me my, get my feed to catch up on me here. It looks like it's locked again. Hang on, I probably lost a spot. Um, yeah, I think I just lost my spot. Uh, 22 years, uh, Tisa Haas for 22 years, and we love your content. I'm always learning. Well, thank you very kindly, Matthias Anderson. Glasses, yeah, reading glass. I'm a, I am wear contacts. I have to now. I have no choice. I can't see with... I can't wear a normal pair of glasses anymore because of my eye, eye issue at all, which is so frustrating beyond belief. So I have to wear contacts to drive. I'm forced to. I have no other choice because this eye is so screwed up compared to the other eye. So if I want to read something for me, I have to wear a pair of reading glasses on top of contacts. 
and I'm I'm just I'm to my wits end with the eye issue. Honestly, it's it's probably one of the most frustrating things. I because if I want to drop somebody off, I got to throw a pair of contacts on because I can't see enough because of the the issue with this eye. My depth perception is gone without the. Con it, it's just been a, a one of those m more frustrating issues than I could imagine. Um, I thought the giving up sugar would be so much worse, but that's that's nothing. Because uh, now I'm all hyped up all the time, and I don't have to take sugar and all that stuff. I feel much better. I'm not gaining weight, so, you know, I felt good about that. I hate to say it. Um, but you're welcome, Matthias. Uh, do you know anything about first day of issue envelopes? First day covers you're talking about. 1940s, Tyler, are pretty much common. The, the most expensive ones are going to be from, like, the turn of the century or before. Uh, probably, like, the 1893 first issues of the Columbian Exposition, which would be the first commemorative U.S. stamps ever issued. First day covers for those would be horrendous, and that's what you're looking for. First day of issue is basically a first day cover. If you look on eBay, FDC is the, the abbreviation you'll see in a listing. There's a whole category just for that topic as well. If it's like a three center, chances are just a dollar or two. Now, some of them have a cachet. The stamps here on the right, on the top right, a cachet is usually an image, a picture, or something on the left-hand side. There's some that go for some good money. Some may be signed by someone or something like that. Like a Colorado silk. It's a, literally a silk image that's been mounted to the cover. Some of those used to go for 20 or 30 bucks. There's some that were hand-painted. Those can go for hundreds. Again, they're fairly rare. They're unique. They're, they're different. You could have a... When I was a kid, I used to collect stamps. I was in Scouts and all that stuff. And we would, I would write to the city of first day of issue prior to the stamp being issued. And you could do this anytime. I used to get Lynn's Stamp News. And you would send them a self-addressed stamp envelope. Uh, well, not a, you, you would send them an envelope, and they would put the stamp on it, the, the first day issue stamp on it. Um, so you'd have to send a stamp to her enough for a stamp in an envelope and then the envelope itself with your return address on it. I'd write it in pencil so I could erase it. Some people would put a cachet on it after they did that. They'd get them in mass quantity and things like that too. So it really depends on the specifics. But most 1940s aren't going to be worth much money at all, in all honesty. You'd have to sell them in a big lot to get anything out of them. I probably got four or 500 first day covers here right this very second, in all honesty. Um, I'm a big stamp guy. I've got couple million stamps probably no exaggeration i've shown books i've got massive books of just stock books of old stamps i i save them all as i said i don't sell any stamps anymore hardly at all one of these days maybe i'll open up a stamp business i don't know uh what do you collect yourself what is your number one favorite thing Devil's Beard, anything is sellable in my book. I do have a, a button collection, as I said. I like militaria items. I've got some uniform pieces from the 19th century and things like that. Um, i got a lot of Civil War buttons uh, and before. Um, i got a lot of uh, utility buttons. Um, I've got some Edison factory. I, I love the early stuff, so I've got a lot of stuff like that. Other than that, we've got a 50s kitchen. We've got a 1949... Um, uh, flecked um, mica table, a kitchen table with all matching chairs, you know, captain's chairs. and I mean, Our whole kitchen is decked out in soda shop stuff. Um, I don't really collect much other than that. The wife collects weebles and stuff. There's a few toys. If I find them dirt cheap, I keep. But um, these days, there's not much that I worry about. I got a huge bottle collection. Again, most of this stuff was acquired through sourcing, so it's not like I spent a fortune on it. But we do have a pretty big bottle collection, I have to say. Um, again, but it's stuff that I've had. We've got some vintage furniture that I've bought through the years. Wife's got a really nice, um, I am almost sure it's a Chinese cabinet that she has for some of her clothing. It's a um, real nice piece. It's an armoire, very nice one. Anyway, I, I don't I don't collect much anymore, honestly. I used to do big and heavy in comic books. Vampirella, I got Vampirella comics. That's about it, I guess. Um, anything I would sell, though, I probably wouldn't sell the Vampirella, though. And There's a few buttons I wouldn't, but most anything else I would. Um, yeah, I don't address any emails, nothing personal, but I don't have time to hit up emails. I get, I get over 220 comments every single day, email wise, my emails, since we've hit, you know, the, the amount of subscribers, my emails just, I don't, I, I couldn't even touch the box. It's full before I get to touch it. So, and I don't accept any images in my mailbox because of all the scams and stuff I get. Um, everything is, is sent through filtered ways. 
Um, I do answer and respond to everything in Patreon. I know it is a paid service, but that's the only one I really hit now at all. Um, Facebook has been uh, on and off nightmare. They dinged me um, not too long ago for a, a, a subscriber's image and it was a reselling image and i got dinged and blocked on it for a few days i wasn't happy and it's eBay, uh, facebook has just went crazy with knocking stuff off lately i'm not a big fan of social media at all and honestly patreon is the only one that i guarantee i answer everything in it uh, i'm not trying to be pushy or advertisers i'm not one to advertise anything i don't push my store to anybody uh, you don't see my store name advertised you don't see me advertising my wares like most other people do that's not my goal my goal is to teach um, again, I like this stuff. I like what I talk about. I'm not here to scam anybody, and I'm not here to get your money to buy my stuff. My stuff isn't... Most everybody who watches this wants to know about this stuff. They don't want to buy it. It's not my concern. Uh, anyway, uh, where are we at? Russell Parker, you provide... Uh, no one comes close... What was the name of the instrumental song or the band you tag at the end of your videos? I'm not sure what band you're meaning. I don't have anything like that. Um, all the music I have is um, public domain or straight here from YouTube. All the names at the end are Patreons. Every name at the end of this video is from a Patreon who has supported my channel. I want to say, I know the numbers may say something different, but the numbers on Patreon, for whatever reason, are never correct. I want to say I have 300... And like 69 Patreons, maybe. I don't really know because I'm not in numbers when it comes to that. I like the content. Um, and again, as I said, there is a new video up right now on Patreon. I'm going to let it go in just a second. Here. Let me try and get one more. Um, Tyler, I have two of them that have a picture of the founder of the Girl Scouts on the stamp. and the other. They're, very, they're very common then. Girl Scout, I know exactly which one you're talking about. Those are very common. Not worth messing with. Lisa Cottage Keeper, well, thank you very much. Susie Q in Texas. Best way to find the value. It depends on the buttons. That's what I have to tell you. I have a thousand, well, probably more like twelve hundred dollars in price. Well, they're not even price guides. They're just identification books. There is no. Well, Civil War. You can use Tice's book. Uh, Tice has a book that's uh, Civil War buttons. And he's got a bunch of other books too. Uh, Triani, Don Triani has a book too on Rev War, and they all tie into Albert's um, uh, button books as well. It's it's I got twelve hundred dollars worth of just price guides just for military, and then if you want to count my European buttons books, my crests livery buttons and stuff. I've probably got twenty six hundred dollars in price. Well, again, I'm not trying to say price goods in in identification guides. Uh, military buttons, you've you've got to know enough about them to even begin to to be able to price them. Um, the face of a military button can look the same for fifty, a hundred years. What matters is what's on the back of the buttons, and that's the only way you can correctly price them. So you would also need Basilton's McGuinn and Basilton's price guy or um, uh, backmark book on top of that. And there's some other ones on manufacturers to price them if you don't know. Again, they could just be common buttons and it could be very easy. But if you're really into buttons and military buttons, there's a lot to know. Um, there's a big learning curve. It took me a while. It's taken me a very long. I've been into buttons for 30 years. So... Um, there's not many people, no one's going to pull a fast one on me on a button, and there's not many people that would be able to um, do much better on pricing or, or anything else. Looking on eBay is usually the best on some items. Um, buttons, though, I, I have to say there's, there's, not, there's not a huge good source to, to price buttons because what too many people do is they price them too cheap on eBay. I'm getting top dollar for all of mine. Um, I'm the number one person who's selling staff officer buttons on all of eBay right now. I've got the the highest ranks on Chrome for all of the buttons that are military from the 1870s and on up. Uh, right now, I'm number one across the board on all of those if you type in the titles, or the staff officer, uh, Indian War. Uh, that's mine come up. Um, those are the prices that I would go by personally, the ones that I have been selling them for and routinely selling them for. We've sold, I'm, I'm going to give you an honest, this is an honest, you know, Hand over the Bible uh, comment. This is probably almost $19,000 worth of buttons since December, I want to say 16th. Uh, just since December 16th, that's how many in just buttons I've sold. Military or uniform buttons of various types. And that's um, 
a minuscule amount of the 2200 I have up now. We've got $100,000 in buttons listed on eBay. Just buttons, nothing else. Of course, we got other listings, but I'm saying just the buttons alone are 100000 And that, at this point, with the new button lot I got in, is maybe 2.5% of all of the buttons I bought. Pound wise, it's it's pound wise. I showed, I think I showed Patreon. I think most of those in Patreon saw the the big size bin, and it's only one row in the bottom. Maybe I'll take a picture of all of the buttons. It'd fill my whole counter space. It's literally going on 700 pounds, or going towards 700 pounds. I want to say, in military buttons. Um, I'm sorry that's not more helpful on the pricing, but there's just there's so many. There's probably couple thousand different designs just for US buttons and then each button design there's many different back marks and those back marks are the way to date them and the only way to price them is to know when they were made so uh, it's it's a long process easy for me but again I've been doing it for 30 years um, th th it's all fallen in my lap I guess I've, I've never thought to find that kind of button quantity but um, thank you Megan very much appreciated Megan Lee, Joe, the bread man, resellers, Channel, how are you doing? Uh, been monster busy the past weekend, list and they will come. That's definitely so. Eric Ebling, how do you determine the value of old prints? I usually look online. Uh, eBay or, or some of the... Depends on the print. Now, again, we're going back to the, the type. Everything depends on the print. Um... It, it, what kind of print is it? Is it is it a Courier knives? Is it just a uh, Nathaniel Courier? Is it a a uh, Norman Wackwell? All that matters. All that matters. Each one has its own basics. There's a a online price uh, list where you can find prices on all that sort of thing. A print is pretty easy to price through some of the national um, art businesses, national art galleries. You can subscribe to like Sotheby's for more expensive ones. You can subscribe to um, Heritage or any of those really. They're all good sources for that. And look through some of their guides. I do pay for some online things like PopSyke and a few of the other auction uh, companies just to be able to get access to their ended listings. But those are ones that I have actually bought from or ones that I have sent stuff in that they have sold for me. So I'm a member of a lot of these things, these, a lot of these pages. Just something you do. I like buttons. Um, armchair auctions is one that I've used for many years. I bought many years ago. They used to sell big lots of buttons. They don't do it anymore, but they used to 10, 20 years ago. Um, so again, I, I, I'm old school. I know all the old school places to sell and buy stuff. Um, again, Patreon scene. There's there's a railroad site that I use a lot to price things. Um, there's a police site that only sells vintage police stuff. You know, they're smaller, but they're they're high dollar stuff. Stuff goes for more on those sites than they do on eBay because people don't list them on eBay because they know about those sites. So again, it all comes down to many different factors to price almost anything. I hate to say it. Um, Marty, is there a decent price guide out there for sheet music? There are some sheet music price guides out there. Um, there's more selective ones, though, like that will be jazz sheets. Um, or, or early R&B, uh, things along that line. I don't remember. I, I don't remember if it was Osborne's book or not, but I think maybe it's Osborne's who I've used. Um, and again, it, there's, there's pages online you can go to. There's sites online besides eBay that you can use. The majority of the rare ones you will never find on eBay or any, any of those big sites. You will have to know historical data. That's one of the few spots where WorthPoint might come in handy for sheet music. Again, I haven't used it, but it may come in handy for those who aren't up on name styles or formats. Or at least if, if you know, if you don't know what type of music you're looking at, I guess that would be a hindrance to you too. Jazz is like the number one that I would sell. Ragtime is the number one selling sheet music there is right now. Ragtime. Uh, Janis Joplin is probably one of the better ones. Maple Leaf Rag, we've had like, uh, those type of things just are awesome. That's that's like where all the money is. If it says rag on it, or if it is a rag and doesn't say rag, they're, they're just hot items. I mean, I wish I gave you a little better answer on that one, Marty, but most price guides these days, if it's a printed one, means nothing to me. Um, all they are is for an identification 
or for a very rough idea on it. If the price guy says one figure, I'll look for something else similar to that same amount by the same type of music and look on what those might be going for on eBay and then judge that price and what it sold on eBay for the other items at the very same price in a price guide. But you can't always do that either. I, I get all my stuff prices from online, honestly. Every price I think I've ever gotten comes from online or my own personal experience. Um, but the identification comes from the, the books and stuff that I own. Um, like with military buttons, I don't need the books for 99% of the U.S. military, probably more than that. I can tell you what state it came from, what year it was made, just by looking at the face and the back. Um, again, it's something that's going to take you time. I, I, there's, I, there's no shortcut whatsoever. I can't give anybody a shortcut for most of that stuff. It's going to take you time. Um, watch videos, read, take some of the books out from the library. You can probably get Albert's um, US, uh, United States Military Uniform Button book from the library, I would imagine. Albert's. Uh, Alpheus Rel uh, Alberts, I think, is his full name. I think I've, I talked to him years ago before. I think he's passed way back when. But I've talked to the guy even who wrote the book. I've talked to Troiani, Don Troiani, which is a painter. He's a, he does prints. He's a print artist. He does a couple prints on Civil War, and they sell like mad. He's got his own books out, trade cards. He, like Mort Kunstler. They're, they're friends. He was one of the authenticity directors for the movie The Patriot. That's Don Troiani. He's got books out. He's been on TV. He's done history specials on, you know, History Channel and all that stuff, too. He owns a Burdine's sharpshooter uniform from the Civil War. The only known example, mind you. Uh, but anyway, I better let it go. We're running towards the end here. I know I've let probably way longer than I said I would in my head. I know I talk a lot. I'm sorry if I didn't get to everybody's comments. I do honestly and sincerely try. I know I never do it, but... I try to go down the list. I'll probably put a couple videos together on some of the items we got. So you might see a postcard video. I'll probably have the toy video up first um, because there is some good information that can be gleaned from the toy video. Again, this is a huge site we're going to be talking about. Um, it's one that I've dealt with for many years now. Um, it's a foreign site. I have to use a translator just to go through their site, but they're on eBay all over the place. So anyway, that's what I got for you today. Again, hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully this was a, a good uh, conversation for you. If you enjoyed it, though, and you didn't hit that like button yet, please pop that like button down there for us. But good evening, and we will see you on the spin side.